Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today we are talking about some big news coming out of the League of Legends world. Um, this is talking about the defending LCS MVP in Summit, who has been a super, super uh, kind of controversial or polarizing player. Obviously, like I said, he was the LCS MVP, um, but there was even some debate if he should have won that award because uh, before his downfall kind of in the playoffs, we had already start to see his downfall a little bit towards the end of the regular season. But yes, for, you know, 75, 80, 85% of the regular season, he truly was the best player uh, in the LCS. And, and obviously what's happened since then has led to all the different discussion, all the different talking points. But in this video today, we're going to be going over a big update for uh, Summit. And uh, before we get into that, I just want to mention a word from today's sponsor, which is Prize Picks. This is daily fantasy made easy. You simply pick your favorite stars, choose their over/under, and watch your players win. Obviously, they are offering esports, uh, different kinds of games and stuff like that, and they are offering League of Legends esports as well. They're doing LCS, they're doing LEC, they did EU Masters, and they're doing MSI right now. Obviously, we are all watching a ton of MSI today. Wasn't necessarily the best day for the West, um, but still, uh, we're already watching a ton of MSI. Side. We're already enjoying it. We're already having fun. You can make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more exciting by playing on prize picks as well. Uh, this is an app and a website. You can get in the Apple App Store, you can get in the Google Play Store. And on your first deposit, prize picks is actually going to match up to $100 for new users, which is an awesome deal. You guys should definitely go check them out. And thank you, thank you so much to them for supporting my channel and my content. With that being said, let's get right into this. So, what we are talking about here today is this tweet from LPL Wulu, he said, 2022 LCS Spring MVP Park Summit Wu Tay, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, revealed on stream that he has a team for the summer split. Now, this is something we've talked a little bit about before, and it's not something that's super, super surprising. Um, like I said, he was the defending LCS MVP. He was known as a pretty damn good top laner in Korea before Cloud9. That's obviously why Cloud9 went out and got him. Um, he is a guy that had uh, been on Western teams' radars before. Um, he had almost come to the West before. He had almost come to North America before, but things didn't work out. It seemed like he kind of always wanted to play in the West. Like maybe he always wanted to play in North America. And again, it worked out really, really well. You know, he got to be a part of Team Korea 9 with LS, all this stuff. Um, and it started out at the beginning with him um, you know, buying more into the LS system. Obviously, it seems like he didn't necessarily fully buy into the LS system, but even once LS left, Summit was still an absolute monster on the NAR, on the Jace. Um, you know, some of these picks just absolutely popping off and having some of the hardest carry performances that we saw in all of North America. And that's what got him the MVP, even though, like I said, he did start to fade out um, towards the end of the regular season. And then obviously into the playoffs, really one of probably the biggest all-time collapses in single individual performances uh, in LCS history from regular season to playoffs. I mean, this guy was the MVP popping off, carrying games massively. And it's not even like he played bad in the playoffs. It's not even like he wasn't carrying. He was actively inting like he was going like two and seven he was going like one and six he was continuing to play these aggressive picks um you know like renekton pulling out stuff like that trying to dominate lane early he was getting camped up top a lot cloud nine failed to play around him effectively but he also failed to ever uh you know broaden his champion pool, broaden his horizons, or learn how to play safe or ward or play around vision or expect that a whole lot of resources were going to be thrown at him. And, um, you know, they, they tried some different picks. He pulled out the Gwen, he pulled out the Camille and just nothing was able to work. And like I said, this was cloud nines, uh, kind of win condition throughout the whole year. Berserker wanted to scale in the bot lane fudge wasn't a super dominant carry threat mid laner. He was more facilitative. He was more supportive. And yes, Blabber could be a carry threat as well. Um, but, you know, when we're just talking about the three lanes, the other team has to pick uh, a lane or at least a side of the map to attack. Summit was often getting attacked and he was often, um, you know, kind of struggling to, to deal with that. And I, that obviously led to Cloud9 kicking him, replacing him. It has come out that, yes, C9 were, were the ones that were interested in moving on from Summit. Um, but still, Summit was a, a good player with good potential. Yes, he didn't end so great. And yes, there are questions of um, our team's going to continue to exploit Summit. Is this a is this something he's going to be able to work on and fix? Is this something a team's going to be able to play around? You know, like maybe if you had a, a bigger mid lane threat, maybe if you had a bigger early game bot lane threat, it would open things up a little bit more for Summit. Or maybe the right coach, or maybe the right uh, game plan, the right teammates can can help him learn how to play this because there's certainly talent, there's certainly potential. And when he got leads, when he got resources, when he was able to get through the early game dominantly. 
he was able to carry games. He was able to convert those leads, but man, watching those playoffs was very, very rough. Um, but we did have this, you know, uh, there's been all these different kinds of rumors. Um, we know that Summit got interest from TSM, uh, potentially talked to TSM about joining them for the summer split. Um, we know that Summit got interest from Misfits as well, which I honestly thought was where Summit was going to end up. Now, there was definitely questions about how Summit was going to fit into Misfits. I think in a vacuum on an individual level, some it was obviously going to be an upgrade over Hear It, um, and that's kind of what Misfits were looking for. But at the same time, I think you can really, really uh, ask the question of, hey, VTO is a resource-heavy, dependent player who wants to kind of have things played around him. Summit clearly is kind of the same way. You know, if he doesn't get attention in the top lane, it seems like he's just going to kind of run it down, especially if teams throw a lot of attention up there. So would VTO and Summit necessarily be the best pair together? I don't know. I think it's a very, very fair question. But again, there's not a lot of there's not a ton of great top lane options out there for misfits. Um, and then obviously summit said he was willing to go to any major region, which was going to bring up, uh, LCK and LPL options as well. And, uh, that got us to this. Here is the clip of summit. This is from Kevin Kim, LOL. Um, I actually can follow him. He has, he's been doing a lot of good tweets and stuff recently for Horizon Esports. but, um, you know, this says summit reading from the chat. Do you have a team for summer split? Yes. Summit then went on to elaborate that at the moment he cannot go into details regarding which team. So here is that clip. Do you have a team for summer split? Yes. So nice and simple. Nothing too crazy. Not a very long clip. Somebody asked me if it's a team for summer split. He says yes. Now, again, not super surprising because he is the defending LCS MVP. He is coming off a pretty good split. Yes, there are some questions about how, just how good he's going to be. But still, there's a lot of mid to lower tier teams that should absolutely be taking risks on guys who have MVP potential. But... The main issue was obviously that Cloud9 made a decently deep run into the playoffs and that the LCS playoffs ran later than a lot of other teams' leagues. So cloud Nine season got over uh, later than a lot of these teams' leagues. This is what Summit has talked about. So it was going to be harder to get on an LEC, an LPL, an LCK team because a lot of those teams' off-seasons had already been going and a lot of these rosters and teams have already kind of been rounded out. But the new rumor going around, and this is something that Minecraft Wooloo, LPL Wooloo, whatever you want to call him, tweeted out here he said rumor league of legends phoenix top of mountain or something i don't know and obviously here don raynor makes it nice and simple for us uh he says pfx summit but fpx summit is the rumor this guy says maybe so you know maybe it's not an official done deal yet who knows but again summit says he has a team there's rumors going around about FPX Summit, and this is very, very interesting. Now, I will say this is not, um, you know, the best in China FPX that we necessarily know of. This isn't Doing B's FPX team. This isn't, uh, you know, the FPX team that, that wins the world title at 3 G2, anything like that. You can see in the spring split, they finished 10th in the LPL regular season. They went 7-8. and eight. They are just a very, very middle-of-the-table team in a very deep LPL. You know, the LPL has 17 teams. I don't know if everyone kind of realizes that, but it's really, really crazy. It is hard to be a top team in the LPL, and there is a ton of variance in the middle. Now, obviously, if FPX would have won one or two more games, they could easily be moving up, uh, and who knows if they just underperformed or whatever, because when you take a look at the uh, FPX roster, there is certainly some talent here. You know, Zhao Laohu um, is the top laner that uh, Summit would be replacing, and I don't, I didn't watch a ton of LPL, so I don't really know how he did. I tried looking on Oracle Elixir for like the stats, and in terms of KDA, Zhao Laohu had a 2.6 KDA in the top lane, which obviously isn't insane or anything like that. Um, but they don't have the laning stats for the LPL on Oracle Elixir. So it's kind of disappointing. So we can't really dive into it too much. But, um, you know, uh, what? FPX finished, what did I say? 10th? FPX finished 10th. Zhao Lahu was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He was 12th in KDA. Um, and that's factoring in when people have like 12 games played and three games played. So overall, his KDA pretty much lined up with FPX's win losses, and uh, that's pretty normal. So I, I don't know, it, just in terms of just looking at KDA in isolation, it's not like Zhao Lao, who was uh, a, a total kind of really, really bad top lane or anything like that. But still, you know, that, that is not to say that Summit can't come in and be an upgrade over him. But again, when you look at this roster, there is some talent. Clid is a guy we know can be very, very good. Gory is a guy we know can be very, very good. LWX, we know can be a monster. I don't know much about Hang, um, but still, if you have summit 
Clid, Gory, LWX, and Hang, that could be a scary, scary lineup. But then at the same time, I'm realizing that, hey, that's three imports. You know, you can't have Gory, Clid, and Summit. Summit's obviously a Korean player. Clid and Gory are obviously Korean players as well. So maybe there's going to be more changes coming to FPX. I don't know what they're going to do. Obviously, they have Care in the mid lane here as well. Um, so they could go, you know, with Summit, Clid, Care, LWX, and, and Hang, and, and maybe that's going to be an okay team. I'm not exactly sure, but there is some talent on this FPX roster. Yes, he's joining a 10th place team, but, um, you know, like I said, there's enough questions to where a top team isn't going to necessarily just be um, willing to bring in Summit, but a middle to bottom tier team, I think it makes a ton of sense. And this could be a very, very high risk, high reward. Um, also, we've heard Summit say that, hey, he'd be interested in going back to NA, going back to uh, Europe or playing in the LCK or LPL. So maybe this will just be a one split thing in the summer before he, you know, kind of evaluates all of his options for 2023. Maybe this is going to be a long-term thing. Him and FPX get done here. Who knows? Um, but this is kind of the new latest rumor that it seems like Summit may be headed to the LPL, may be headed to FPX up in the top lane. Um, and at the end of the day, I think that's really, really cool that he does end up with a team. I'm glad that he you know, ends up somewhere rather than nowhere. We already heard Cloud9 come out and say that there's not going to be a buyout or anything like that on his contract. Uh, and they're going to help him get on a new team, which is also really, really cool. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Let me drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about FPX Summit. Do you think it's a good move, bad move, somewhere in between? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, stay up to date on all my latest content. Consider checking out prize picks. First link in the description below. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.